What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA, and today we're gonna go over the gear shift output settings for drag race applications. So the gear shift output settings we're gonna cover is gonna be mainly drag racing scenarios, drag racing transmissions. I'm talking power glides, turbo 400s, Liberties, Lencos, or even drag bikes. Anything that you have to do the gear shift output feature we're going to show you how to do that and what each of the parameters are going to do. All right, guys. So we're hopping on the software side. I've got one of our sample start maps, Pro 550, FT Spark, 520 injectors. Just something to start with. For the gear shift output stuff, first we want to go to map options and turn on gear shift output. We're going to start with simple stuff. We're going to start like a a two-speed, a power glide, or a two-speed 400, something like that. So we'll turn on gear shift output. Also, make sure you turn on gear change detection over here and sensors and calibration. This is going to help with the logging and kind of how the gear shift stuff works. We're going to start over there, actually, gear change detection. We're going to tell it number of gears, two. Put in your rear gear here. Put in your first gear. second gear and detection type make sure we change this to by gear shift output there's there's a lot of options here depending on what you're doing like analog sensor this is more for bikes rpm drop this is like a manual car you don't really have any sensors this is one way to kind of tell which gear it's in input signal this is just a five volt or zero volt input a lot of stuff that we're not going to use in a drag race situation with gear shift output so we got our ratio set up. This is mainly just going to be to calculate slip in the log, converter slip. If you have this right, it's going to be more accurate for you. So now we're going to go up to the actual gear shift output settings. Gear shift mode, we have automatic shift by RPM, manual up shift button. That's like if you have a button to tell it to shift. Uh, Power glide, turbo 400 guys, you're not going to have that. Um, I usually use automatic shift by RPM and manual upshift allowed. I use that on everything. It covers both of these. RPM source, you can either use engine RPM or input shaft RPM. 99% uh, of guys use engine RPM. Lock time between gear shift. This isn't really going to affect you much on a power glide. We'll cover this on the 3 speed, 4 speed, 5 speed stuff. Output mode single output, that just means that we have one output called gear shift output and that goes to either an air shifter or a relay if you have an electric shifter. Single pulse, uh, air shift transmission, it can be the same if you have an electric solenoid. This is just saying how long it's going to apply that output on either the MAC valve or the relay, either one that's going to shift the car. Output signal, 0 volts or 12 volts, this is just depends how you wire it. Most of the time, if you have an air shifter, like just a MAC valve, I usually use a yellow output activated at 12 volts, and you can run it directly to the MAC valve. That yellows can do 5 amps directly, a MAC valve's like less than half an amp or something, it's like nothing. And it just makes it where you have less wiring all over the place, less 12 volt, less relay, stuff like that. If you have a relay for a big electric solenoid, then you can do either or, it really doesn't matter. So this is saying, okay, turn on gear shift with RPM above this. Something to keep in mind, this stuff only works on a validated launch. So if you want to test your shifter, you can't sit there in the pits and rev it up and it's going to shift. You need to leave off the trans brake for it to do this. If you're going to test this, you need to use the test time base feature section. Even with a power glide, I usually do the each gear thing. We can tell it, okay, the one, two shift at this, but it gives you the option for a minimum gear time. So we can say, okay, I have to be in first gear this long and it has to be this much RPM for me to shift. It's kind of, it, it kind of really helps on a power glide car, something you're trying to run fast with. So if you go out and knock the tire off before 1.2, if it zings up to 8,000, you'll still be in low gear after you pedal it. If you want the thing to go to high gear, then you could turn that off. But I, I use this on almost everything. Power reduction during gear shift. This stuff is really just for bikes. This is really the only time I see this get used, so we're not going to worry about that. 
One more thing I do want to touch on with a power glide before we move on. This is most of your setup, but I know some guys have the old, I guess it's Beyondo style that it's, it has to hold power on it to hold it in first, then it's a spring's going to put it in the second. So if you need it to hold power all the time, the simplest thing to do, wire it up like normal, do everything like normal, set up your output signal backwards. So if you're really trying to send 12 volts to this thing, call it this. That way the output will do the opposite thing all the time. It'll hold it all the time. And then when you need to shift, it will switch states and it'll let it go up to second gear. All right, so we're going to go back to gear change detection. We're going to work on something, let's say a three speed 400. So we'll say we have three gears. Let's input our ratios. Same thing, leave it on gear shift output. Then we go to the feature here, gear shift output. Now the, th this matters more now because we have two shifts to make. This matters a lot more. So we're gonna do automatic shift by RPM, engine RPM. So with a three speed or more gears, we're gonna use the lock time between gear shift. You don't absolutely have to, but I would highly recommend it. What this is gonna let us do is, it's gonna let us ignore engine RPM right after a shift. So let's say we don't have this on and Depending on the transmission, depending on the valve body, a lot of factors, how loose is the converter. Even though we hit the shift solenoid for 0.25 of a second, it may take a little longer than that for the engine RPM to actually go down on the next gear, or it might not even go down much at all. A lot of the Pro Charger cars are really loose converters. You barely see a gear change on them. So we're gonna turn this on. It's gonna say, okay, hit the shift output for 0.25. And then for 0.4 seconds, we're just going to ignore the engine RPM. We're not going to try to shift again because we're, we're not we're not trying to hit the two, three, four tenths after we just went into second gear. If you don't have this on, then let's say both of these are stacked on top of each other at 8,000. If we tell it to shift and it just hits this amount of time and the RPM isn't below 8,000 yet, then it's going to put you into second gear and immediately put you into third gear right behind it. So turning this on can help eliminate that. The minimum gear time, same thing. I like to use it on this. Uh, if you have to pedal the car, it'll still be in low gear. If you just want it to run up in a second, you can turn it off. So that there covers our basic power glide, turbo 400, two speed 400 stuff, basic, you know, drag race transmissions. Now we're going to get into more of the Lanco and Liberty stuff. So. Let's keep the same ratios and say we have a Lenko. Now we need one output per gear because we have typically, I don't know if it's a three speed, you got three air pods on it. So one output per gear. And then if it's a Lenko, the big thing we need to change is remain active. So when it powers the first gear solenoid, when it does the shift to the second gear, it leaves the power on the first gear. So now we're stacking them. Then when it shifts to third, it's going to put power on a third and leave power on the two previous ones. That's super important. You have to have that to run a Lenko. Something else you guys will need with a Lenko or a Liberty, either one. We'll go to gear change detection. We do need some kind of gear reset button on either one of these. By default, the two-step button, if you hold it, your trans brake button, if you hold it for six tenths of a second, it'll automatically put you back in first. So after the burnout, something like that, before you back up. Or if you prefer, you can have just a gear reset button. It can be an analog input, or you can even use a switch panel. I kind of, I like the switch panels because there's less wiring and stuff to be loose on a switch and stuff like that something to be intermittent the switch panel any of our stuff is can based so that kind of eliminates any of that but just by default i know a lot of people just use the two-step button for the gear reset so now let's say we have a liberty we'll call it five gears stick some ratios in here
Again, this is just, it's going to work either way, but this is going to help calculate your slip. And we need to change this to by gear shift output Liberty Gearbox. So same thing, we need a gear reset source just like the Lanco. But with a Liberty, we do need a drive switch. Either 0 volts or 12 volts, however you want to turn that on. Or you can use a switch panel. If you don't have a manual reverser, then you also need a reverse button. Either a switch panel or you can use an analog input. This gear detection delay part, this is if you're really trying to get some of your fuel compensations, timing compensations, and like your log data, like super dead on, then you can you can play with this. So if you've got enough runs and you know, okay, this thing takes two tenths to make the one two, it takes that much for the two three, whatever, you can put that in here. And so then when you do fuel compensations and timing compensations, you don't have to build in some dead time before it. And it kind of lines up more exact on the log when it did actually go in that gear not just when we commanded it to go. This is more really nitpicky stuff. I don't see a ton of people use this unless you're like 10 tenths guy or really picky. Back to the settings, gear shift output. The big change from the Lenko, we just need to tell it one output at a time because we're gonna trigger first and then when we wanna go to second, we're gonna turn it off and turn on second. And then when we wanna go to third, turn it off and turn on third, that kind of thing. The disable output with TPS below, some guys use this, especially with Liberties. So if you pedal the car, it'll just take the power from all the solenoids. You, you throw away the run, but a lot of the times you save from hurting the transmission. Same thing, we have our each gear RPMs, and I mean, you can, you can put these different if you want, however you want to set them up. You have a minimum gear time and a lock time between gear shift. Most Liberty stuff I see shifts really fast. You don't need a lot of lock time between gear shift. You wouldn't need normally four tenths because you got so many gears to get through, but it's still nice to have on. Now we're gonna throw all this out the window. So the first thing we're gonna do, like we're gonna shift a bike, set up a bike to automatically shift here in the pass. Gear change detection, set it up for six gears. Stick some ratios in here. Now, most bikes do have an analog sensor, although you could do it by gear shift output either way. If you're going to use your analog sensor, you need to normally sit there with the bike not running, go to diagnostic panel, check out your input, see what the voltage is. And this usually just takes one input. So I'm just going to stick some stuff in here. This is something I had already from a Suzuki previously. I do not have these numbers memorized. This is written on a piece of paper. So you can use analog sensor or gear shift output, either one. That kind of gave you a quick run through how to set up the analog sensor. It can be useful on some stuff if you don't know what gear you're in, like you do upshifts during a burnout, something like that. It's kind of easy to backtrack your way if you just have a gear right there on the dash. Gear shift output, we're gonna set it up just like that. Like we don't have to make it super complicated. Let's say your bike doesn't have an analog sensor. Gear shift output's gonna work fine. Again, you can do any of these options here, however you wanna do it. Lock time between gear shift, I would still leave that on even though the bikes are really quick changing gear. You might really trim that down, something like that. Single output, so it's going to be a single pulse. This is how long we're going to hit the air shifter. This is our engine RPMs, the bike, you're going to be way above 8,000, but this is just for an example. You can still have a minimum gear time on this, and now we're going to use the power reduction during gear shift stuff. So if you know after you hit your output, it takes a little bit of time for that thing to change gear, you can build in a tenth right there. Whatever it is, they're, they're all different. So you, it's good to have a log before you get really nitpicky on this stuff. 
This is minimum engine RPM for power reduction. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be above eighteen hundred when we're doing this. You you could set this higher if you want, but I'm, I want to don't want to put it right on the edge of where you're gonna shift it. Like if you're planning on shifting at twelve thousand, don't set this up at eleven five. Even if you're automatically shifting, or especially if you're manually up shifting, if you're not perfect, you're a little low. It's not gonna do this for you. You can do either ignition or fuel and ignition. Fuel and ignition, I see more on nitro stuff. That way it doesn't diesel and take off on you. Uh, ignition, this is how most guys are going to use this. So this is a cut duration, pretty much. And generally, it starts out bigger and gets smaller. This is just totally example numbers to throw in here for you. I like to start on the big side. That way we know this thing is gonna make the shift versus it being too small and you don't make the shift or it's really rough on stuff. Ignition timing during power reduction. So this is this amount of time. This is gonna be ignition timing and ignition cut for this amount of time. And we built this little delay in it as well. So this is not an ignition modifier. This is absolute ignition timing. If you put minus 40 in here, it's going to pull your timing to minus 40. If you put zero, it's going to have zero degrees of timing, zero spark advance. This is not a modifier. The ignition cut, this is basically how much ignition cut we're doing. If we have 20%, that means 20 of the next 100 ignition events are going to be cut. 20% is pretty light. Anything over 50 is pretty aggressive uh i see guys some some guys are more heavy on the timing and less heavy on the cut some guys use a lot more cut and a lot less timing pulled it, it's going to be something you got to figure out with your combination running it but this is definitely gonna help you guys get this set up and working there is also an option you can do a closed loop power reduction so basically, this time isn't going to be a set time. It's going to wait until it detects the next gear, which if you do it by gear shift output, it's going to go here and it's going to look at this and it's going to say, OK, I'm in the next gear, which isn't a very exact way to do it. If you have the analog sensor, this is easier to use. I still like to have a set number in here and then you know what it's going to do every time you're commanding it every time if you want to work on it, get the thing shifting faster or something like that. You know if you're taking an amount of time out of here, not just letting a, a sensor move and decide that, okay, I'm in the next gear now. All right, so that wraps up the gear shift output settings. We covered a lot. Um, slow it down if it's whatever your transmission is. Like there, there's a lot of information in there that not everybody's gonna use, but we wanted to cover all of our bases. If you guys have any more questions, of course, reach out to our tech support team and like share subscribe leave a comment below if you guys have a tech tuesday video something you want to get covered leave a comment below and we'll do our best to get to that and we will see you guys next tuesday